Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. I am having the best day because I spent most of my day making these wonderful balloon flowers, but I also made these awesome balloon fistulas. My goal at the end of this video is that you will feel more comfortable cannulating and you will have more success with your cannulation and you are going to be so excited by the end of this video that you're going to call your manager up and you're going to be like, can I work tomorrow because I cannot wait to use the tools I learned from this video on my patients tomorrow. If you are new to my channel or haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. It helps bring my videos higher on the search, which means that my videos get to more people and more people will have fun learning about dialysis. I don't know about you guys, but as a nurse, I love rules of thumb. And the fistula rule of thumb is the rule of six. The rule of six is, Six weeks after fistula creation, your fistula should be mature enough to use, best case scenario. And how you assess if your fistula is mature enough to use is by this next rule. You want your fistula to be six millimeters in diameter. If you have an ultrasound at your clinic, you can use that to help you measure. And this is how you'll also measure the depth of the fistula. You do not want the fistula deeper than 0.6 centimeters from the skin. If, you, if that fistula is too deep, you're going to have a lot of trouble cannulating that fistula. And finally, if you're able to get two needles in and you have a transonic at your your clinic, you're able to measure that access flow. We want that access flow in that fistula to be greater than 600 mils per minute. And to kind of put that into perspective for you, our machine pumps go really fast. So if your machine pump is going at 350 mils per minute, but your access flow is only 300 mils per minute, you're trying to pull more blood than what is going through that fistula and you're going to get a lot of alarm. There's an, an, also another part of the rule of six, and they, the rule is that you want that fistula at least six centimeters long. I actually feel that that's a pretty short fistula and doesn't give you a lot of room to cannulate, but it should be enough to start cannulating, and as time goes on, that fistula gets stronger. You should get a longer fistula with more room to cannulate. And the other thing is, the other rule, <laughs> I love rules. The other rule is that you should always use a tourniquet when you're cannulating. If you are trying to cannulate this fistula without a tourniquet, that fistula is going to be very collapsible. You'll try to put that needle in and it'll collapse and you'll have a very hard time trying to advance that needle. So if you put a tourniquet on there, it gets it gets way more taut and it's more buoyant and it's you have an easier time getting that needle in where that fistula won't collapse on you. So if you take one thing from this video, please use a tourniquet every single time you cannulate. Okay, now let's start cannulating. Here is my fistula. We're going, to, we're going to start with this purple balloon and I'm going to give it a quick measure. With every fistula, there's an anastomosis and that's the surgical incision that they make to connect the artery to the vein. So let's say if this is the astomosis, we want to start measuring at least two finger widths and two finger widths is about an inch and a half. So depending on the size of your fingers, I would say you want to start cannulating two inches up from where that anastomosis is. If you cannulate too close to where the surgical incision is, you're going to run into high arterial pressures because of low flow. All right, so here I'm gonna start measuring up here. So this is, this is six centimeters. You know, that's not a lot of room for one inch needles to go in, but it's, it's a place to start. And then if I measure the diameter here, I am at about six millimeters in diameter. So my initial impression was that this is a pretty small fistula, but this is actually Actually, this is actually pretty much what you will start cannulating with a new fistula. So let's let's give it a start. My hands are all red because I put red food coloring in there. I'm going to start cannulating and what I really want to point out is when you put this needle in here, you need to advance that needle slow. Once you get blood return, you always want a pulse here. As you advance that needle, there should always be a pulse. And unfortunately, my balloon fistula does not have a pulse, so I'll just kind of pull back on the syringe to make sure that I'm still in this fistula. So I've got it, I've got my tourniquet on. This one, I guess the arterial needle's going down, which I could be going this way, but I'm going to start cannulating. So I'm going to put this needle in here. Oh, it's spraying. But you can see my syringe is filling up. 
And as I advance, and see I kind of went down the bottom, I'm getting a drip down there. So I went through the fistula and that might not stop. And as I released, when I came back out, I kind of felt it let go. So then I'm able to advance that needle the rest of the way, okay? So this is not a perfect cannulation, but see, maybe I went too fast. I pulled back and I'm getting a lot of air. I think I kind of ran out of blood in there, but that's why I made a lot of fistula. So let's take this needle out and let's try again with this other fistula. I'm gonna anchor this and I'm going to start cannulating. And as I cannulate, this has a, enough pressure. So I'm going to see blood return in here. So that's, that's more than I even asked for. So I'm gonna put the needle in, the bevel's up. I'm gonna advance it. And now I'm going to go slower, okay? Going nice and slow. There, and I got it, and I got a good blood return. See, I don't have, it's not, I don't have a lot of flow in here, so that's kind of collapsed on me, but if I put it back in, I can see that I'm in that fistula. Never push, never push the blood back in or the saline back into the fistula if you're not confident that your needle is in the fistula because you're gonna cause an infiltrate which will cause you to have a harder time getting those needles in. So this is, I'm so proud of myself, this was so fun. So here I am in the fistula. Way to go, Lindsay, woohoo! So now what do I do from here? I think it might spray out at me, but I'm just gonna take the needle out because now I'm going to talk about, what's it gonna spray? Oh yeah, it sure did. So now I'm going to talk about what kind of problems, I'm just gonna kind of cut this off. What kind of problems, whoa. All right, I'm gonna take a break and give this a clean out. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. And as we know, fistulas come in all shapes and sizes. So I'm gonna talk about one of the most common errors I see with people that are new to cannulating, and that is that they advance the needle too quickly. So what they do is they put the needle in fast, and then they look, look and see if they have a pulse they don't have a pulse, they pull the needle out and they do it again. So if you're going in and out of this fistula and going through the bottom, on the surface, everything might look fine. It might not look like you're causing any damage, but under that fistula, you are causing a lot of damage and also a lot of pain. So I just kind of want to show you what happens under the surface when you cannulate, when you go in too fast. So if I go in too fast, oh God, oh my God. I don't know if you guys see that, but you can kind of see that the blood, we're causing a bruise, it's dripping down the bottom. So under the surface, when they come back, you might see a bruise, their arm might be swollen, or they might complain of a lot of pain when you cannulate them. So I don't know how I'm going to do this now. I'm just gonna cut this. Let's see what happens when I cut this. All right. Oh my gosh, there's blood everywhere. That's another reason why it's important to wear your PPE. You need to wear your, your protective jacket, your face shield, your mask. You need to wear all the PPE because sometimes if there's a lot of pressure in that fistula, it is going to spray all over. All right. Oh, good thing I have another fistula. Let's see what happens when I do this one. I'll try to make less pressure and see if I can show you guys a little better what I'm talking about. The other thing is when you advance these needles slow and you don't have to do a lot of pass throughs where you put that needle in slow and you get it in the first try, you're going to hear your patients say, wow, you did a good job. That didn't hurt at all. It's when you do a lot of pass throughs that the patients are going to experience more pain. So I'm just gonna do less pressure here just to kind of get a better visual of what happens here. I put this needle, oh, I put green in here. So here, you have that needle through, and if you keep doing that, you're, you're causing a lot of damage here. So they'll put it in, they'll check for blood return, they won't get anything, they'll pull it out, and they'll do it again. See, here you're in. So sometimes you totally miss the fistula when you go in too fast. So then you kind of pull that needle out, and then you advance it, but you're causing damage underneath and you're causing bruising and pain. So the other thing I really want you to take from this video is to advance those needles slow. You will have more success. Now I'm going to clean this up and then I'm going to talk about aneurysms. Let's talk aneurysms. And I really like to compare aneurysms to 
a car tire. I hit curves with my car more often than I like to admit. And what happens is I hit the curb, I drive off, everything's working fine, no damage done. And then I'll go and look at my tire and it'll look like there is a fist. Somebody punched my tire from the inside out and I have a weak area in my tire. And my car might run fine. I drive around, I hit bumps, I go over more curbs, I drive for a while and I'm not having any problems. But if I keep driving with that tire, with that weak area in the tire, I am going to end up with a flat tire. So that is kind of what an aneurysm is. You can kind of see here, you know, here, fistulas come in all shapes and sizes. This one has quite a few aneurysms. You can see here, this is, this is thicker. There's a, a more of a wall vessel. And then here's where the aneurysm is and it's weaker. The number one attraction to these aneurysms with new cannulators is that it is easy to see, it's easy to feel, and it's easy to get that needle in. You can imagine you have an easier time getting in a needle an area of this size versus a needle of this size. But if you keep cannulating here, you're going to develop more scar tissue, the aneurysm's going to get bigger, the wall's going to get weaker, and at some point, without an intervention, this fistula is going to rupture. So what I have found is if I educate the patient, I'm educating the nurse. So this is where you really need to talk to the patient. You really need to talk to them about changing cannulation sites. And if we keep going in that same spot, they're going to run into more problems, they're going to have more doctor's appointments, and they're going to have more blood loss. So if you teach your patient those things, they will go to the next person that cannulates them and be like, okay, I want you to go here. You need to avoid, avoid that aneurysm. So here we have some aneurysm. So let's see what happens when I cannulate this aneurysm. All right, so I'm gonna put my needle in. Can we see this? I put my needle in, it bursts, okay? That couldn't have gone any better for this scenario. Okay, so best case scenario, you run into bleeding problems at the dialysis center. The fistula can't, won't stop bleeding, you're at the center, you hold pressure, you can call 911 and get them to the ER and get some stitches in their fistula quickly. Worst case scenario is this patient is at home, large aneurysms in their arm, and they bump it on a corner thing, or maybe they sleep on it, it causes too much pressure, and that fistula ruptures. And as I said, our goal is to get 600 mils per minute going through that fistula. So if that ruptures, you're losing a lot of blood very quickly. And if this patient lives alone, they're gonna have a hard time dialing 911 and holding pressure. So this is again where you need to really educate your staff and your patients what to do when you have bleeding. You need to hold pressure. If they're at home, they need to call 911. Best case scenario, the ambulance gets there in time and you can save their life. But people have died at home from ruptured fistulas. So it is very important to keep an eye on those aneurysms, make sure they're not getting too big and making sure that they are seeing your vascular surgeon to have have an intervention for those aneurysms. I don't really want to leave this video on such a downer, but oh, I know. My neighbors, my new neighbors brought me some eggs to eat, and eggs are a great form of protein for our dialysis patients. So let's have an egg. Let's see. They did a really good job. It's really pretty. Now let's peel it. Well, this was not hard boiled. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you guys for the egg. I think maybe this one will be a little better. Oh yeah. All right. Thank you all for watching. I can't wait to talk more about fistulas. I can talk about fistulas all day. There is a lot to learn about fistulas. So this is definitely the tip of the iceberg. I hope you guys learned a lot and I'll see you guys next time.